Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I wanted to show you a very special card I put together. So first I'll start off showing some of the papers I used from this Tim Holtz stash. I picked out a blue, a green, and a brown paper to use from this. And then for my card base I used this light gray color card stock from this other collection. I also used some Hero Arts and layering dies, dies, and sentiments as well as a couple of Spellbinders dies to create this card. So next we'll move on to the phase where I put together the little gel shaker. So I used some hair gel, food, food coloring, and Project Life sleeves. I had tested this out beforehand just to make sure that the gel would not leak out whenever it was all put together and that test seemed to hold together pretty good. So I'll just show you how I did this. I used a shot glass just because it was the simplest way to do this and squeeze some of the gel into it. After that I added a little bit of the blue color so that I could make it more look like water and then mix that up. The next phase of this was to get the gel inside the Project Life sleeve before sealing it shut. As you can see I was using a medicine oral syringe to pull it out of the shot glass before squeezing it inside of that sleeve and I made sure to be very careful about putting that towards the very bottom so that it would not uh, be up at the top whenever I needed to seal the sleeve and once I pulled everything out of this glass, I even added some that I had left over from my experiment that I talked about. Next, I needed to seal up the sleeve, so I pushed that gel down to make sure it was towards the bottom. Then I prepared to use the fuse tool, which I'd allowed to get hot over a 15 to 20 minute period. If you don't allow it to get warm enough, it won't seal very well. And then I pulled it slowly over the plastic using the guide that comes in the kit. And sometimes you have to really watch carefully to make sure that it seals. And if it doesn't, then you may have to go over a spot or two. Uh, luckily, it went pretty good the first time I did it. So I just tested to make sure that it was going to hold. Went back over another spot. And when I was satisfied, I moved to the next step. I did a test run before stamping the fish onto Nina silver white cardstock. So I took a piece of copy paper and practiced some different color combinations, including the standard colors that come with the Hero Arts layering set, as well as three different memento colors in order to get three different color combos for the fish. In this section, I just showed stamping one fish because all the other ones were done the exact same way. I just referred to my color chart whenever I was going on to the next one so that I could choose the appropriate ink color for that particular fish. So the first stamp is a solid one, which is generally speaking the lightest color. The next part of this process is stamping on the next uh, detailed layer, which is usually a medium to dark color on top of that before moving on to the third piece, which is just the accent points on the top of the fish. And at that point, you have a detailed area which you have to line up over the fin so that you can get that part as precise as possible. For the face details, I just used a small acrylic block to add that since it's pretty easy to line up and you don't really need the misty for that. At this phase, I started die cutting all the fish and as well as the other pieces to go into the card. I sped up quite a bit of the sections just to cut down on the total time on this video. When I was recording, I found that I had over 38 minutes of footage to cut down and make into a manageable size. To cut all the foliage that went into this project, I used a Spellbinders fern die set and the green paper from the Tim Holtz set that I showed you earlier in the video. So I ran it through the die cut machine twice and might have even cut another piece or two just to have some extra pieces to go around the pond area. Next I moved on to cutting this large Spellbinders die in the same green paper. I realized later that when I did this video I did not capture that part so I'm actually refilming this section so you can see it. Uh, in this case I used a precision base plate because I found it made it much easier to get uh, the paper removed from this die because it's so intricate. 
I am cutting this on brown paper, but in real life when I did this, I cut it on the green paper, not the brown paper. In order to prepare the area for the pond, I needed to be a little bit creative with it. So I didn't want a regular shape because ponds are not really in a regular shape. So I solved my issue by using two different circle dies from Dynamics and cut a larger one first, then went back and cut a smaller circle a little bit offset. And once I had done that, I took my detail scissors and cut the inside area to make it look a little more irregular on the inside part. And once I finished that, I took the piece I cut die cut earlier in order to split it into two pieces so that it would cover the ends of my pond area. Now preparing to move into the final stages of putting this whole thing together. So I had my gray card base, my blue area that's the bottom of the pond and the brown cutout area that will go on top. And once I glued down the blue base, I used some Be Creative double-sided tape in order to attach the gel area because it's a very strong adhesive and I knew that it would keep it in place very well. And now we come to the fun part of the video when we start seeing all the separate pieces come together. I first, I needed to put down the fish that was going to go underneath the pond water area, glue down the water. At that point, I'm ready to create uh, basically something like I would do with a shaker card by adding foam adhesive tape all around the edges to form a frame. At that point, I'm going to add the brown layer where I'd cut, die cut the pond outline from earlier on top of this and start decorating with all the foliage pieces that I die cut out earlier. Uh, one part that I didn't show in this video is when I stamped the water lilies and put those together, but you'll see it in the final assembly that's coming up where I did that piece of it. Now at this point I do speed it up quite a bit just showing where I adhere all the foliage pieces around the pond glue on the fish as well as the water lilies and another part of the video that I did not show here is when I die cut an, a piece of the light gray cardstock and I stamped it with one of the sentiments from the set that said wishing you and on the inside of the card I also added one of the fish to decorate the inside as well as stamping it with another hero art sentiment that just simply said happy father's day and this is a kind of card that could be used pretty much for any occasion but since father's day is coming up pretty soon it just seemed like the perfect thing to do for this particular video and as i mentioned earlier you can get more details about this card by visiting my blog i'll have more pictures and links to products she used there if you like this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any further uh, videos from me. Again, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. And until next time.